is gonna get wicked. Alrighty then, brother. We're live. We're live. Welcome back to the Hectic Podcast. This is going to be our first official episode. How do you feel about that? Good. A little nervous. Fantastic. I'm Brooke yeah. Roney. This is my co-host, James B. Singer. We're going to be giving you some stories today. A little, little uh, today in history action, if you will. But before we start, yeah, how you incredible can. is this? That's actually really good. I don't even know what you put in it, but... Yeah. Wild. So this liquid death. Thirst uh, murdered. Yeah. But we threw in some uh, lime salt. Is that what it's called? I don't know. That's what I'm curious. True lime or something. The little lime salt packets. It's pretty good. Throw that, one of those into these liquid lime sparkling water. You'll be on cloud nine. You know what I like about these cans? Hmm. They put branding on both sides. Like, it's really hard not to have Yeah, it's hard not to see it, huh? Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyways, so you cut me off. Yeah, I cut, so you cut me <laughs> off. <laughs> Why are you eating chicken? Why am I eating chicken? Because I thought chicken, like, technically chicken makes you more constipated, right? Te- like, chicken's, like, more yeah, solid. Yeah, pro- protein shakes are going to be worse. Well, and if I'm not true. getting any protein. You need the protein, but I'm like, why not, like, beef or ground beef? That would be better, but it's, like... More what's more accessible right that's true you know chicken. like like today when i got to work our uh our coworker cade he barbecued a bunch of chicken oh, and mashed okay. potatoes and brought that into the office so after my doctor's appointment today i got back and did that and why am i eating just chicken he looks thin yeah <laughs> dude <laughs> literally i've dropped so your dad said i dropped they're showing 13 pounds might be because I'm heavier in the past two days because I've actually yeah, eaten some real eating. food. Yeah. And I'm not necessarily passing it very quick. Uh, but I think Body's I've lost well almost out. 20 pounds in the matter of two weeks just from water fasting, having hardly any nutrients other than like bone broth. I've had bone broth and uh, there's like this bag of, of, it's like a supplement that's for IBD. Oh. Yeah. That uh, uh, Warner actually bought because he was having stomach issues back then. I don't huh. know. And where did he find it? <laughs> At a health food store, I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> but I saw it up there, and so I had some supposedly mango flavored, but it doesn't taste like mango. Does it taste good? Uh, it tastes like, imagine mangoes like went rotten, but dull rotten, not sour rotten. That's the best I can I can describe it. Rotten just doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I have Crohn's disease, and uh, I got a colonoscopy not too long ago, and I'm not sure if it was just from that. I think my Crohn's was also acting up, but my small intestine constricted right where it comes into your large intestine, which is your terminal ilium. Uh, that's the way where my Crohn's lives. I guess that's the most common. And so uh, it constricted to the size of a pinhole. And so I haven't been able to pass any stools. So I've been just on a liquid diet. But today he said... Buying all the stools, can't pass them up. All of them. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Can't pass them up. Middle of the pod, I'm out. Um, But no, I'm in a better situation than he thought. So I I think we're going to be able to avoid surgery, which is dope. Yeah, I think you were stressing out a little too much. I was so stressed out. Yeah. Literally, dude, I should show you. Friggin' Jordan blowing me up. Brooke's going to die. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a refund on my Japanese tickets. Like, that was his <laughs> biggest worry, too. It really was. Do you know how expensive Delta One is? It's incredibly <laughs> expensive. <laughs> so but, funny. Yeah. That's funny. Dude, that'd be fun, though. Yeah. You got a new dog. Got a dog. How do you like that giant schnauzer? A giant schnauzer named Lucy. Jet black too, right? Like Jet a- black. She has a tiny little spot of white on her chest okay. and like four hairs like on her lower lip that are white. There you go. A little but, soul patch. Yeah, a little yeah. soul patch. Hell yeah. She's cute though. Yeah, dude. She's- Everybody that's seen her tells me that like the color of black she is is like surprising. Oh yeah, it's black. Like, like she's black. That's cool. Yeah. That's it's, cool. It's so. really cool. She's uh she's a puppy, so yeah. like You've been fighting this for a minute. 
Yeah. Like, I always knew that if I was going to get a dog, it was going to be a giant schnauzer, but I didn't want a dog. Yeah. It's just a lot of work, dude. And having a puppy. It's rough. Like, I haven't had a good night's sleep since we got her. Really? Yeah. Just, like, she always wakes up at least once. She whines throughout the night. Like Yeah, you were saying that you were sleeping on the floor in front of her cage. Literally for the first couple of nights, I was sleeping on the floor in front of her cage because, like, I refused to have her in the bed. All you people that sleep with dogs in your bed, like, that's just, like... Psychotic. Well, it's weird to me. Like, I think there's a level of... It's gross to me. There's a level of respect, too, that I think, like, if you're in charge, like, it's your bed, not the dog's. Yeah. Not only that, but, like, like you and, like, your spouse, your significant other, your partner, whatever you want to call them, like, that's y'all's space for, like, rest, sex, sex <laughs> and, like, relaxation. And yeah. if you're inviting an animal into that space, like, I feel like it's not. It's a weird thing. It's yeah. weird. I feel Even psychologically, like for, it's a weird thing. For people thing. to do that, like, that's all, you know, all power to you, but I will not have a dog in my bed. Will your dog be allowed on your couch? No. Yeah. Only because it's like a like a white couch and like he's not hypoallergenic. She know. is. She oh is? yeah, okay. like she doesn't shit at all. But yeah, a white couch, it, you're gonna get. It's not even the hair. Stuff. It's like the fact that like she doesn't take off her shoes when she goes yeah, in, right. out of the it's house. A dog, yeah, yeah. It's like even no matter how clean we keep her and everything like that, like there's still gonna be a little bit of dirt. Yeah. And so she's just not allowed on the couch. Yeah. She but wants to get on the couch too. Yeah. And when you're at work. Yeah, well, but that's like Bell's part gonna, of training. Oh no, no, no! Bell no? won't let her. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Oh, she's been jumping, okay. dude. Literally yesterday, um, we had like a like we had some photographers come over, um, Braden and Sid, um, Bailey and, and Ian's friends, and they came mm-hmm. over and took pictures and stuff, and, and we let her on the couch for that, just for like the cuteness level of it. Okay, but because of that, she thinks that she's allowed on the couch now already, huh? dude. And she, like, hasn't been able to jump up on the couch until this morning. She freaking one-hopped that. Oh, no. She's 10 it's weeks old, over. dude, and she's jumping up. She's huge. but It's all over. She's cute. She's fun. She's getting her ears chopped off tomorrow. Yep. Make her look more of, like, a Doberman. Yeah. And then you're going to yeah. cut her that way, too, right? Because right now she's cut like a... Yeah, she has schnauzer. a schnauzer cut, like, which I think is really cute. But, like, the only issue is, like, every time she goes outside, like, just stuff gets caught in that longer fur. Oh, I'll bet. All those and stickers. So, yeah. Like, no bueno. Eh, maybe every once in a while I'll do that. During cut. the snow, she's going to get wet. Is all yeah. About. And during the summer, she'll get hot. So it's yeah. like, we might as well just shave her down. Yeah. Looks good. Her hair's super thick and super dark. It's dope, though. So, and you actually like her now. I do You're like her. You're open to the idea of a dog. I like her. She's fun. It. Sometimes I miss her when I'm at work, but she, uh, she's funny, dude. Dogs are funny. Yeah. yeah. But don't let dogs in your bed. <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> like not only that, but like no matter how clean a dog is, dude, they still want to eat their own poop. Like they still like walk. You know what I mean? Like they're it's just, just not it's gross. Like even if like you bathe them every single day, like we like keep this dog so clean. Yeah, like we bathe her all the time. We brush her out all the time. Yeah, like, and I, you've only had her a couple days, right? Yeah, we've had her since Friday. And what is Wednesday? Yeah, but <laughs> you've already ba- bathed her probably what two, twice. Three times? Twice. Yeah. yeah. And they, she got you. a bath on Friday, like the, yeah. the breeder bathed her right before we picked her up. In fact, right. they brought her out to us still kind of wet. Heck yeah. So. Oh, there you but, go. Yeah, dude. New dog. It's been good. Should we jump into our, uh, let's do it at the beginning of the podcast, right? Dana, yeah, it's not, why not? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, today in history, because this is the first live one, uh, two things we kind of focus on in this podcast is uh, <clears throat> today in history, or in case you missed it, or uh, old news, as I yeah. like to put it. Old, mm-hmm. old shit. Content <laughs> tends to do well, um, and it can get kind of interesting. It can. Today is an, a very interesting when one. When you dig into it, dude. When, when you, you dig, dig into, into the it. history, and yeah. I think that's one thing that like makes this segment interesting is the fact that like a lot of the times like we read history in a textbook, mm-hmm. and history is written by the winners, right? It's written 100%. by the victors. This is a prime example and of that. And you just glaze no, over the actual this backstory. This is the opposite example of that. What do you mean? Written by the winners? Oh, yeah. This no, you're right. written by the loser. Yeah. No. Technically. Well, this just shows a little bit about what actually happened. Right. And why it became why, a holiday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And why it's not a holiday anymore, kind of, too, in a way. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. So Christopher Columbus actually landed in the Americas today. Yes. Right. So in case you're watching this later, today's Wednesday, October, October 12th. 12th. 
Yep, this um, happened in 1492. Yeah, and Indigenous People Day or Columbus Day, the day formerly known as Columbus Day, currently known as Indigenous People Day, was yeah. Monday, so the 10th. Um, but the day that Christopher Columbus actually landed or spotted the island, um, they call it like a Bohemian, like a, the yeah. Bahamas. Okay, in the Bahamas. He landed in the Bahamas. Okay. Was actually October 12th. Okay. Um, so a lot of people know the story of Christopher Colum- Christ- Christopher Cristo- Columbus. Cristobal Colombo, I think that's Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's his actual in, name. In, in Italian his, in or Italian. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, which... I guess we can get into the whole history of him like arriving too, right? Like, yeah, I mean, all of that. I think that's taught. That was taught in schools for a long time, it, not anymore. Right, not not anymore. And the other thing too is like, I think you and I were taught that like most people in that time era thought the world was flat, right? Yeah, is mm-hmm. that what you were taught? That's exactly what I was taught. So like, looking into it more, apparently that's not necessarily true. Yeah, well, he actually knew it was round right? yeah or, or had thought it was round most like educated europeans thought the world was round okay they just didn't know the pacific ocean existed okay they just yeah. thought it went from like west coast of europe all the way around to asia oh okay. just the atlantic ocean right that's all they thought was okay. on the globe and so they didn't know there was something on the other side of the globe yeah which is the americas yeah so he literally like convinced like the king of portugal or whoever it was to let him sail around the Atlantic Ocean to the East Indies. That was his goal. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so that's what we all learned in school. Um, But we were not taught why this was actually made a holiday. Yeah. So there's actually a reason this became a holiday, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. It's super crazy. Yeah, it's wild. It's absolutely insane. So it doesn't have anything to do with today necessarily, but the reason it's coming up is because of like the fact that he landed today. Um. So before uh, we started moving away from Christopher Columbus Day and, and calling it Indigenous People Day and the respect that's there, and that, that's all great, but we'll get into that in a minute as well. Um, I had never heard of this. And I don't think you had I had either. either. But, and it's, it's old news. It's old. Like, it's over 100 years, 130 years yep. ago. This was in 1891. 1891, which in a previous episode, somebody caught us. I accidentally said 19 instead of like 18. Yeah, I know. Video. Somebody got upset about yeah, that. Yeah, they were mad. No and reason just, correcting this. And that was on, uh, it was an important holiday. holiday. It was uh, Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation. Proclamation. Yeah, I said 19 something. And, but and what I think is 18, when we cut the clip, I think I did correct myself, but it was like stumbled up and yeah, whatever. Yeah, lost some of um, it. So. so 1891. The almost war with Italy. Yeah. Which, That's what I'm calling this. The almost war dude, with Italy. Dude, this gives me Godfather vibes. Okay. Like, uh huh. You, you watch Godfather 1 where Michael kills the police chief and the yep. and, and the other mob boss. My favorite so, series, by the way. Dude. Incredible, incredible movie series. I was just watching it on the plane. Yeah. Like Long, but... So long. The second movie is three hours. I know. And like that's like a 1990s film. Yeah. Like early 2000s. That's not very common back then. Yeah. Um, older than that, even I think it was wasn't well. The, the first 80s? one was like seventy four, and they released the second one. And oh, okay. I don't remember. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, but in New Orleans, March fourteenth, eighteen ninety one, like you said, um, somebody killed the police chief. Okay. His name was like uh, something Hennessy, David Hennessy. David Hennessy killed the police chief. No of idea. New Orleans. Yes. Okay. No, no. David Hennessy was the police chief oh, of New Orleans. Okay, and he was killed by someone. They're someone not totally sure who. And so they thought it was the Italian Americans because of the mob. Yeah, right? because they were the mafia. The mafia yeah. in the U.S. at the time. Which this whole event actually coined the term mafia. That's how yeah. this became like popular. Also. Yeah, yeah. In, in American in Italian, like yeah. verbiage. Um, so basically, someone kills police chief David Hennessy. Everyone thinks it's the Italians. So they round up eleven of them. Mm-hmm. And they put them into trial. Italian Americans, they're not even totally sure if these guys are actually part of the mob, right? No, well, they think they have mob ties and they think that they. It's yeah. all, dude. It's, it's a lot to- of hearsay. It's profiling, dude. Yeah. Like, 100% it's, profiling. It's like OG profiling, which honestly just goes to show, like, that's just part of human history. Like, that's just kind of how it always has been. And the um, Italians and the Irish actually got it the worst back then. Oh, dude. They got it really bad. Maybe All not the, the worst, whole, but they got it really they bad. They got it bad. Yeah. And like I think people forget like a lot of like different peoples have always been like treated unfairly. Like yeah. in every 
piece of history. Yeah. And yeah. no matter what country you go to, no, if you're exactly. not part of that country, that's just how it kind of yeah. went. Yeah. It's sad, but that's, it is. It's just how the it reality is. of it. Like you go to South America, dude, things they say down there, super racist. Oh yeah. But oh, I'll bet. Yeah. You're used to it, dude. <laughs> they say some mean shit. Um, but basically, Let's, so they round up these 11 people, okay. throw them in jail, <clears throat> do a trial. I think like six of them are like acquitted, like they're okay. not guilty. Right. And then like the other five or th- like three of them, they like, say it's a mistrial and the right. other two, like basically the 11, none of them are guilty. Right. But the citizens of New Orleans are so enraged. They and they're bro- still in jail at this time. Yeah. So they're in the holding cell. Yeah. Which doesn't make like, dude, it almost feels set up. It does feel set up. Because it's like they were pretty much acquitted and then put placed in, in a jail. holding cell. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, let us, let's do this paperwork yeah. in 1891. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take a while for that to process. Our yeah. servers are slow. <laughs> yeah. Our, like, serv- our servers are slow. <laughs> dial up is just, <laughs> it's not beep. working. Yeah. Like, no. So um, New Orleans citizens break into this jail and they kill all 11 Italian Americans. Italy gets a hold of this news, right? Yeah. Well, like, they break in there, and most of them, they just shoot them. Yeah, shot them. All 11 Point of them. blank. Just kill them. Yep. Well, Italy finds out about it. Rome finds out about it. And they tell, like, the Italian ambassador that's in the United States to leave, to go back to Italy. They pull their ambassador, and they cut ties with the U.S. That's signs of war right there. Well, not only that, but, like, they start rumors that, like, Italy and America are going to war. Yeah. So that this is, year, like, legit. Literally, dude. So, like, that's March, and mm-hmm. that entire year, like, there's, like, signs that Italy and America are going to be going to war. Dude, could you imagine? Like... Of all countries? Well, because they, I don't think there's anywhere in history where they were... Well, World War... Adverse to us, World, were they? World War II, I believe they were. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, because yeah, remember, you had uh, Mussolini. Yeah, okay, like, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Um, but regardless, like, 1891, like, that's pretty early on. And a lot of immigrants were from Italy in that time period. So a lot of America was built by Italians. Like, yeah. you know? Um, anyways, so that whole, like, conflict makes tensions between the U.S. and Italy super tight, super heavy. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of where it comes back around to Christopher Columbus. Because in 1892, um, U.S. President Benjamin Harrison... Yep, at the time. Never heard his name before, unless you're reading through the presence of the United States. Right. But um, he was president in 1892, and he actually decided to declare uh, Columbus Day as a national holiday. And that's because Christopher Columbus was an it, Italian man. Yep. And yeah. the people of Italy will not let you forget that. Like, they're <laughs> proud of Christopher Columbus. Yeah. And so like to ease tensions there, to ease tensions with Rome and make everybody happy, they declared it a national holiday. Day, a national holiday. And this is uh, depicted in the 1999 film Vendetta uh, with Christopher Walken. Yeah. I've never watched it. Have you seen it? No, but I think it, I need to watch I'm it. I'm going to watch it now. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So it's all based around like those lynchings. Yeah. Which uh, one thing that I, I found like as I was studying this um, for years after the lynchings, so from 1891 forward, um, New Orleans children um, of other ethnicities, so not Italians, right? Yeah. But they would taunt the Italian Americans by saying, who killed the chief? <laughs> Isn't oh, that good, no. dude? That like, is, that's who great. killed the chief? Because they never figured out who killed the chief. Yeah, it was never sh- no. proven. Yeah, they never figured it out. And all of those people that committed the lynchings, none of them were ever or, like yeah. um, put to trial. That's they were wild. all just let go. Yeah, like it just happened, and they just kind of brushed it's like, it away. Oh, okay, makes sense, dude. That is wild. They almost war with Italy. Yeah, like crazy yeah and to tie it all back in it's kind of funny what's happening now it's a good thing i'm not none of this is bad right obviously christopher christopher columbus killed massive amounts of people native americans like it it was kind of a slaughter when he came across to the u.s which it can i mean and a lot of it was sickness and things and like yeah to the americas and uh thing is too is a lot of it was sickness yeah yeah and like part of it's sad too because like a lot of the history is just recorded only because he was here like, right. people have been killing each other forever. And yeah. killing each other is never right. And I'm not, yeah. like, saying that it is. Um, it's just funny how as history kind of goes, we just, like, kind of change the story as things evolve. Yeah, they do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, okay, yep, we loved Christopher Columbus because we needed to, like, boost an Italian and save that relationship. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, hey, you know, like, things he did weren't right. Yeah. So now we're changing the day again for a reason to, like, 
for a reason that was similar to the reason we made it in the first place. Yep. A balm, a balm for a relationship that's a little bit wounded. That is wild. Yeah. Funny how history yeah. repeats itself. History repeats itself all the time. Yes, it does. All the time. This is a funny, this is a fun one to go into. Dude, we okay. can go into it forever. Yeah. So, okay. Well, if, let, let's jump into a what if really quick. Okay. okay. What if you were in the mob back during the industrial revolution or actually after the industrial revolution, let's say eight late 1800s. Okay. So like, or mid late mid 1800s. So like just like roughly around that same time period. Roughly around that that same time period. Dude, that's an interesting time to be around. It is, but the way that it's depicted now is like and and I think that this is true of mafia, right? It it's a family. It's a right? It's a a, a, a crime family and it's based a lot in respect. And honesty, actually. Yeah. I right? mean, a lot of, like, The Godfather was written b- for a reason, right? Yeah. Like, don't come to me asking, you know. For my daughter's hand. Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> don't come to me asking to give me money for a favor. Like, come <laughs> right. to me in friendship. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It was like. You watched it recently. Oh, you, You've dude. got the lines. Yeah. Yeah. Come to me in friendship. Come to me. There. On the day my daughter is to be married. <laughs> and you tell me. <laughs> that's it. That's literally, literally yeah. though. Like that's exactly. What's the actor's name? Main guy in it. Well, isn't it Al Pacino? Al Pacino. Is Michael? But I don't know who no, the no. old Al man Pacino is. Al Pacino is Michael. Yeah, but um, yeah. Anyways, yeah. great movie. But yeah, let's say that you're in a crime family back in those days. A lot of it was based in respect, although they did do a lot of horrible and crime ridden things. Dude, people have been doing horrible and crime ridden right. things to, to this very minute on October twelfth at freaking seven thirty at night. Dude. Yeah, like. I, I think if I was in the mob, I, it'd be kind of dope. I think every, and I, and I kind of said this on Jace's uh, podcast, I think every man has, and uh, a lot of people have said this, but every man has a monster in him that he needs to learn to control, right? Yeah. And it's funny because when you put yourself in a what if situation, like you're in the mob, part of that seems so attractive to a man. You start to think about, like, how would I be? Yeah. Like, what would I be like? How would I react in this yeah. situation? Would how I many be? businesses would I be pulling money from for safety? Not you only know? that, but it's like, how aggressive would I be versus how... Understanding. Understanding. Mm-hmm. How smart, how tactful would I be Yeah. versus how just trigger happy. Yeah, right. Who knows? Which is crazy. It is Because, like, in the Industrial Revolution, what, they're carrying around muskets? Like... Yeah, People getting stabbed back then. Oh yeah, right. yeah, stabbings, dude. The the a uh, uh, little mini gun. Yeah, little. Uh, well, that's Tommy gun. Sorry, the Tommy. That's gun. later though, isn't it? What year was the Tommy, Tommy gun guns? Uh, introduced made late eighteen hundreds, right? Dude, I don't know. Let's fact check that. Yeah, you should fact check that. If not, I would somebody say else it is, will though. for us. Nine. No, yeah, because the machine gun was done before the nineteen eleven firearm. Right, and that was in 1911 when the. When was the Tommy created. gun invented? Mm, 1918. Oh, okay, so it was yeah. right after the 1911. Yeah, that's wild. Oh yeah, because I guess a lot of those like depicted video like movies were kind of in that 1900 to 1940 range, weren't they? Yeah. So, yeah, the first submachine gun, the Thompson. Thompson's submachine gun was 1918. Wild, dude. Yeah. Such a rad gun, though. Sweet. So dude. sick. Well, when you see the ones that Neil had, uh-huh. like that golden one, dude. Wild. Oof. Yeah, super yeah. cool. And super then in cool. the movie, you see all the drive bys with the Tommy guns yeah, out, the out the window. These old 40s out the window, vehicles. Yeah, out dude. the window, the old mob car, dude. Oh, bro. Speaking of 40s vehicles, Cuba was insane. So we went to Cuba, what, how long ago? It's been like almost six years it's ago. It's been forever. When Trump opened it up. <laughs> yeah, for a minute. Yeah. And then we said that, well, no, I think even before he opened it. Or no, no it, it was it during. Was during his, yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it during. was like 2017. But you still had to have a reason to go there, right? And wasn't yeah. ours an education? We got a yeah. letter from Utah Valley University. Yeah, literally, Q, like uh, UVU was going to Cuba anyways yeah. for like an educational trip. So like we went to the, basically we went into their course, like to their thing, got like their itinerary, all their letter, all their like stuff, like acting as if we we're gonna yeah. go but they were charging something ridiculous like yeah they were charging like six grand for like a week yeah and we spent 
pennies on the dollar for yeah. it, 1200 a person. Because once maybe. you get the Cuba, it's so cheap. So cheap. And we bought the cheap flights. What was it? We it were was, young. I think it was $20 a night, and that included breakfast that included every morning. breakfast every morning i think it was 15 i it think was it was 15, ten dollars right, a night per person night for and an Airbnb. additional five for breakfast and breakfast was fire it was so good a person that lived in the building that lived upstairs they'd run to the market every morning buy us a bunch of buy fresh us a bunch bread of fresh food fresh meats they'd cook fruits it, drop it off in the morning early before we even Tons woke of up eggs yep yep and then we'd get up in the morning have breakfast nice this is in breakfast. um uh, havana havana dude so it's too bad that communism has ruined that place. Yeah, Cuban Missile Crisis, all that drama. Yeah. That was all. Yeah, too bad. Anyway, the, the vehicles though, nineteen forties, dude. It's like a blast from the past. But what's wild is they take these old nineteen forty vehicles. They swap the engine out with a bus engine. They'll take a ta- Toyota Dash and put that in there. Install that. Yeah, <laughs> install that, and then they'll jack them up. And put like off road tires on these old 1940 vehicles. Well, dude, our freaking taxi driver, Jordan was his name. I still remember. Yep. I actually have him saved in my phone. Yep. Jordan Cuba taxi driver. <laughs> nice. Bro, he was driving like a, a, a Bel Air. Yeah. That was on like a freaking truck frame. Yep. Because it was all jacked up with huge tires. Oh, yeah. It probably with had a, a, yeah, a three, four inch lift. Oh, yeah. With a bus engine in that thing, dude. Yeah. 16 gears. Dude. And then just giant just sound system in the back, dude. Yep. I think I lost most of my hearing. 100%. On that trip, yep. driving with that guy. Dude, that was wild. Such a wild experience. If you get the opportunity to go to Cuba, you absolutely should. You should. It Even is if you have to go on place. a cruise and land mm-hmm. in the port and like kind of do it that way, like it's worth going. It's worth every yeah. It's and worth like, every penny. And not only that, but go, but also like we got lucky because we got the chance to like actually talk with like Cubans like when they were relaxed in their home because like we got to like meet the host of the Airbnb and yeah. our friend Jace had already been there so there's already a relationship and so we got to like go hang out with them and just sit in their living room and chat and like hearing them talk about like the country that they love but like the circumstances that they're in is yeah. wild it's it's odd because they're like we love Cuba and like like our Airbnb host for example yeah he is an engineer okay super well educated I never really talked to him at all. Well, I guess it was because like, I spoke Spanish, and yeah, so he was right. like talking to me. So yep. basically, he is an, an engineer in school because everyone there can get an education because it's all paid for. The and the college is, there is actually, I hear it's pretty, pretty good, good, actually. Yeah. But then you can't get a job. Right. And if you do get a job, it doesn't pay you very well. So literally, he is an engineer, but he drives a taxi because he makes more on the taxi. Wild. It's just like, dude, they, and on the food. The only thing you can eat there is like pasta. Yeah. The, so yeah, where we stayed, there was this really cool little coffee bar right across the street that had good good food. Yeah. And then around the corner, there was this little Italian joint. I don't even know if it was an Italian joint or I, if they just. I don't know what it was. I think yeah. they just served spaghetti because yeah. that's what was on the menu. <laughs> Giant plates of spaghetti. Yeah. For yeah. like three bucks. Yep. And the place pro- across the street did pizza, which yeah. was actually pretty good. Yeah, not bad. But and the, the pastry food, shop was good too. Pastry shop was good too. The, yeah, that was just right up the street, yeah. right next to the by the, the university. Statue, the university, yeah. um, the food there's not good though. No. If if you're going there for a an, an eat staycation, no, like it's it's not, it's no. not the place to go. We even went to a really nice restaurant at the top of this place because it's really the only place you can get beef. Yeah, in the country because there's there's only no way to government it. and yeah. people with money can eat beef. Yep, and so we went there. I, I got the chicken cordon bleu. I don't think I even had the meat. Pretty sure I got the beef. Or no, yeah. And, and it, it, was, was, it was all right. It's all right. Yeah. Thing is, too, is like what's so crazy to me is even if you have a cow or you have a horse that is yours, yeah. technically the government owns it. So if it dies, you can't eat it. Right. You have to call the government and say, hey, my horse died, and they have to come and watch you burn or bury it. Yeah. And Just if so they come, don't take if the they meat, come right? and that horse is gone, like they say, that horse gets stolen. Prison. Yeah, you're screwed. Yeah, prison. Like you have to be accountable for that animal, and you can't eat it. It's so wild, dude. I couldn't even imagine it. But yeah, I, I told you the the weird thing that happened when we were in that car, right? So we're coming out of the flea market there, like on turned, down by the by the coast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's like a big flea market. It's this giant, I don't know, like hangar almost, just yeah. filled with vendors. It's a regular flea market, I guess, yeah. but not outdoors. Um, we're leaving, we turn right at this light 
And I turn around and there's this guy that's like, he's like right behind us, him and his boy. And like, he goes like this. He like makes the gun. He goes like this. He goes in the front window. I'm walking out the back window. And my first response was like, try to be kind of a smart ass, which you probably shouldn't be. What did you do? I was like, (laughs) (laughs) like a little, you got it. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure you got a kick out of that. Uh, Here's the thing, though. I was like, what are they going to do? Yeah. Like, I did feel pretty safe there, other than the few times we got hustled. Yeah. Oh, that That's another thing. Cuba is like the country of hustle. Oh, Like, dude. you go down by we the Malecon. We got played, bro. Oh, dude. Yeah. We got played super hard Because if you go down times. by the Malecon, it seems like everybody's just having a good time. You go down there and dance. There's music, everything. It's fun. People are doing it for money. That's why they're doing it. The only reason. They're there for money. That's it. The only it kind of sucked. That that was it yeah. was like a great time until that, and then it's like, uh, yeah, it's like it's a bummer. Like I'll give you some money, but like maybe ask me up front. Like mm-hmm. you know, exactly. Ask me up front. Well, then remember when we we're going to the what was it like art gallery where there's like parties at night? I'm trying to remember what it's called. The one that was in the basement? No, it was like, we didn't actually end up going in because of the whole experience that happened before. We took the taxi. It was a little bit outside of town. The taxi stopped, remember? Mm -hmm. And like, the taxi must have coordinated with the people because literally the taxi stops. Dudes open the door. Freaking prostitute grabs Brett, takes him off. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then they switched the bills on me, saying I only paid with yeah, a 1, yeah, but I paid but with it, a 10. Yeah, you actually paid with a 10. So we paid double for the stupid no, ride. No, it was a, yeah, 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 yep. It was like, dude. Yeah, like, damn. He's like, no, 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 it you want to give me $1. It was such a stressful environment. I was the last person in the car. You guys were all torn out of there. Brett was like, I don't even know where he was. Just like, getting taken down. They were just taking him. And I was like, these other guys don't speak Spanish. Brett's the only one that does, and he's getting hauled up. Dude, it was, it was, it was a mess. But... Yeah. What a wild trip, dude. That was fun. Dude, it was, was crazy. Blast. And I'm not trying to make this a Godfather episode, but there is a scene in Godfather where it's on the steps of the university right next to where we stayed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right there in Cuba. Like right when like the government gets overthrown when he's down there. Yeah. It's super crazy, dude. It's wild. Super crazy. How tied in those families were. Oh, yeah. Wild. I posted one about uh, Gravano. What's his, uh, what's his first name? Uh... Something Gravano. Let's see. Sammy. Sammy the Bowl Gravano. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been on a lot of podcasts lately. Well, didn't they censor that one? I think they did. I posted uh, I posted two bites from that, and they actually, one of them got like 1 million, 2 million views, something like that. It's pretty good. But Sammy the Bowl is wild, right? Because he was, tech. I don't want to talk too much on this, right? But like technically, he was kind of a snitch. At least that's what people thought. And uh, because John Gotti was the family that he was in, John Gotti's Mm -hmm. mob group, essentially. And it was kind of like he kind of took over John Gotti by force. And uh, anyways, he kind of tells his story. Wild that the guy's out and around and walking like dudes killed. You know, probably over 27 years old, just still kicking. Dude, wild. You know, it's crazy. Still looks good. Dude's jacked. Yeah. Dude, Jack. He's got to be on some TRT or oh, something, yeah, something, dude. Something. Something. Or maybe he got the CRISPR done like Liver King. Mm. <laughs> Which, actually, I want to talk about that. But first, since we're on the mob topic, a few years ago, I was rummaging through my great-grandmother's attic. Okay. Um, and so I guess my step-great-grandfather, because she was married, got divorced, and then married a new guy. That guy, his name was Ray. Ray was a bag boy for the mob in the 1920s in Chicago. That's wild. Yeah. So like he has a picture with all of the the mafia guys. Yeah. Which is weird because they didn't take a lot of pictures, but literally it's a picture with a whole bunch of mafia looking dudes and some freaking like Tommy guns. No. Dead serious. That's so sick. I got to find that picture. I think my grandparents still have it. Yeah. But. See, this is the part of it that you like, you look at and you think about and you're like, oh, that'd be dope. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, he was just the, like, I think I'm thinking the right term is bag boy. Yeah. Probably. Because he wasn't in the family. They just like hired him to like you know yeah. run errands. Well, and they for bring them. a lot of young kids around. Yeah, yeah, like yep. and they kind of roll them into the family yeah. slowly but surely. And so he kind of just came up in that, and yeah. then he ended up joining the military and like was kind of deployed that whole side you of know things. What? But one thing about the mob that I thought was really interesting, and uh, Sammy Gravano mentioned this in the podcast, was that uh, 
it was incredible for people that were in the mob or family of mob or friends of the mob to start businesses because they were expected to go to that person for whatever they were providing. Yeah, and no right? discounts. Yeah, no discounts. <laughs> it's like yeah. if, if they opened up a deli, that's where you went to get sandwiches. That's the family's deli. Yep. yep. And if somebody else in the family had a deli, you can't start one. Yeah. But that's it did good, make though, it dude. incredibly lucrative for the families because it, it kind of caused a lot of uh, 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 commotion right in the different neighborhoods that they would open up businesses because you had their whole family going there, all their friends, any, but any of the businesses that were kind of under yeah, their the lock spot. and key, it's the spot you got to go there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden you get regular people that are coming because it's great food. Well, not only that, but like it builds like their tribe, right? It does. Yeah. Like if your tribe, if your if your family unit can provide everything it needs, like, well, you become your own sovereign nation, right? And that's probably why they have so much power. Because it's like, what can the government take away? It's like they have their food. Yeah. They have well, I mean, their, think their about the banking. biggest cities in the, the U.S., New York, Las Vegas. Chicago. These are, these are, yeah, Chicago. These are all crime-ran Literally, cities. Though. Even yeah. still. Miami. Yeah, Miami. Even okay. still, though. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> Would be cool, though. Could you can be cool. say a lot of things about New York, but we won't say them on this podcast. Um, yeah, for hell's sake, dude! Where was I going with that? Oh, so I saw a clip today. Okay, and we don't need to spend a lot of time on this. Go a little closer. But I didn't know this, and this guy's on the internet too much, so I actually don't even really want to talk about it. But I want to talk about it with you, and we might as well talk about it on air. Yeah. Dude, I saw a clip because you know how the Liver King is just jacked out of his mind, and everyone thinks he's on steroids. Uh huh. So. And I really want to know where this guy came from. So if someone watches this ever and wants to just drop a link of like an actual history of the Liver King, who this Brian Johnson guy is. Brian Johnson's, yeah. Like how he got all this money. Johnson. Like how he became who he is. But the reason he's so jacked, according to him, he went to like Holland or somewhere and got CRISPR done on his genes. He got gene editing done. I thought gene editing could only be done when you were in the womb. Dude, not according to him. He's he literally went and got like Is it like blood doping? They pull it out, shift some I don't know up what and... they did, dude. But they literally like changed him so like he literally just produces muscle. Okay, so I saw another clip that's adverse to that. He was on Brendan Schaub's uh uh TFATK. Okay. Fighter and yeah. the kid if you watch yeah. their yeah. podcast. Uh-huh. Um he Brendan Schaub asked him straight up, so why do you tell people you don't take steroids? He was like, say? what did he say? His response was like, um, it was something like, because of what, because of the implications or something like that is what he said. Because of the implications. Then he goes into this big, long, like broken down Dude. explanation as to why it made no sense. It just seems shady to me. He's like on, there's he's something, some there's something, well, not only that, but like, why is he even doing what he's doing? Like the money, I guess, but like yeah, but I mean, he's he was already making a lot of money before that. How? I mean, everybody says snake oil, but he owns a lot of uh, ancestral tenant companies, a lot of uh, do, natural. Do that many people buy in that you can be that wealthy though and get that big? No, I I, I think it's it's definitely yeah. Who knows what? Like, what's your what's your who wants to eat testicles, bro? Yeah, bull testicles, fun. Like liver, heart down with that like i see the value there meat see the value there but a testicle dude so what's your theory i don't know it just seems weird to me like i don't i hate putting on too many tinfoil hats because i get a lot of slack for that <laughs> yeah you do. and like here's the thing flack. flack i get flacked on a lot for this <laughs> but and i and i don't want to take a hard stance so like there we go. Boom. Better. Better. <laughs> One fist away. I'm just trying to. Um, about it. When I put my tinfoil hat on, I don't want to take too hard of a stance. So, I'm, like, unless I'm ready to take a hard stance. On this one, I'm not ready to take a hard stance. Yeah. But there is something shady about the Liver King. Something not right. I, like for sure, but I, not I would just say the, not just the steroids, not just the fact that he eats balls. Uh huh. 
But there's like there's something weird, dude. <laughs> he eats balls. I've heard that testicle is actually pretty good. Well, yeah. I mean, you got Rocky Mountain oysters. You can go eat a bowl ball. I've never had them. It's literally Rocky Mountain oyster is just eating like a freaking. I had a tongue balls. in a stew. Tongue's not bad. Tongue's like it's kind of tough, but it's tough. Um, it's just. Weird. I think. I think that's the same. I have the same feeling. That's how a lot of these influencers are, though. Like, like you can kind of see that same personality in a lot of people that are kind of driving for fame. But who's backing him? Like, who's backing the Liver King? But for why? Why? I, that's what I don't I'm, see that's a what I'm wondering. other than like right, but like, where did this dude come from? Yeah, out how of does nowhere. He, how does he have as much money as he has? Yeah, he literally came out of nowhere, dude. You, I I tried to find it today. Like, where did this guy come from? And all it says is like. The Liver King is big on TikTok and Instagram and has amassed 1.5 million. It's like cool. I, I think I think part of it is he was a regular guy, Brian Johnson, before and was doing regular stuff. Was actually like running a business, like actually doing work. And then I think he kind of lost it. So you don't think there's anything? Because like I think one of his stories, he's shady. like walking down New York and he's like. Somebody asked him, like, oh, Liver King, like, whatever. He's like, or, no, they came up and was like, hey, Brian Johnson. He's like, Brian Johnson. <laughs> he's like, freaking, because he doesn't know who that is, right? Uh, but I think he's, I think he's just kind of lost it. You, you might be right. Maybe I'm digging too deep. You might that's be why, digging kind of deep. That's why I said I'm not ready to take a hard stance, but just. One of, one of my, okay, like. My spidey sense is tingle yeah. around that guy. There you go. I've been doing an everyday challenge, right? These podcasts. Oh, yeah. Clips. Everyday challenge. I think I'm at like 208 days. That's impressive. Or 210, something like That's that. That's impressive. One thing I'm noticing, though, is that if I'm starting to notice that some of the podcast clips are like, they're not getting as many views. I'm not gaining as many followers day to day. Like, it's something down. shifted. It's slowing down. There's a part of me that's like... I, I can't stop. Like I have to come up with something else. Like in my head, I think you get into this everyday challenge and you start going down a path of like seeing how you can one up it. How do I one up it? Or like, how do I continue to grow? It's addictive. And I think yeah. that that's a big part of what this is. So he started with ancestral <clears throat> tenants, eating started liver and, and sim- organs, which is, you know, like there's a lot of science around that. And now he's eating testicles and walking around New York and in short shorts and no shirt. Yeah. Like I, I honestly just think that you, I think you get to a point where you're one upping yourself every single time you get in front of the camera, yeah. Or every time you touch your phone, you're one up, one upping yourself. Bro, he gives me like Brendan Fraser, George of the Jungle vibes, <laughs> like running around <laughs> nice. Central Park, like yeah. swinging from vines and shit. You know what I mean? Like, I need to watch that movie again. That was a good one, dude. That was one of my favorites. I haven't seen it in years. Growing up, we used to ride around in my grandparents' motorhome. Okay. And I would watch that movie just on repeat, dude. <laughs> just all the time. Grand, my grandpa is just going 90 miles an hour in a motorhome that has no business going that fast, going to freaking <laughs> Flaming Gorge. Nice. And I'm just watching George of the Jungle in the backseat yeah, playing yeah. Uno. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid being in like motorhomes like that and it scaring me. Oh, it's definitely scary. Was it scary as a kid? A little bit, but like at the same time, you're like, this is you so cool. You can distract yourself. I'm yeah. at like home, but I'm not. Yeah, like, it's you know so I mean? rad. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, so last podcast with Nate, we didn't get to you on stories. Okay. You're right. We talked about both of ours scared for your life. Like what was the one time in your life that you were scared for your life? That's hard to think of. It so, is right. And first I'll off, I'll give you a minute, but actually Nate put me on to the story about the New Orleans massacre. So I'll shout out Nate oh, Nat, or Nate. lynchings. Um, oh, man. Dude's Mr. Genius. Smooth. Dude, dude is very smart. Yeah, he is. Um, hmm. The only one that's coming to my mind right now, yeah. and I'm sure there's others. Like, I've done dumb stuff yeah. in my life. Like, I'm sure there's others. But one time, I was 18. It was, like, right after high school. It was, like, probably the, the winter after high school. I was just working. Okay. Um, I was working at a factory. Okay. We basically made books and phone books, and it was a rough no way. job. I didn't dude. know that. Yeah, I was there for a little while, okay. um, not super long. I just kind of needed like almost like a, a short term job before I I dipped to go on my mission. Right. <clears throat> um, but I had to start work at like five a.m. and I was done by like two. 
every day. And so I uh, would just bring my shotgun with me to work. Mm -hmm. I just go hunt ducks after just me by myself, Um, which the lake was just right there by where I worked. So I'd usually just head out of the lake, walk around, see if I could find anything, shoot a couple, maybe not. Honestly, I don't think I shot very many ducks that year. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But one day I got this bright idea. I'll just drive up the canyon, bring my binoculars, and I'll just go like check the river. And if I see ducks there, I'll just like go down and see if I can jump them up. Yeah. So I got up Spanish Fort Canyon. And you're just alone. Yeah, by myself. You do that a lot though. You go hunting and stuff alone. You'll go or spotting at least. You do spotting alone. And sometimes I'll go hunting by myself too. Yeah. But like now I'm smarter about it and it's because of this very scenario. So now I'll typically only go by myself if I have cell service everywhere that I'm gonna be. Right. Because in this scenario, dude, I didn't have cell reception. And so basically what happened is I figured out a spot where like I was safe, legal, everything was good. Found some ducks, and this was like January, February. This right. snow's super deep, fresh snowstorm, and it's freezing cold. And it's like later in the day, right? So like the sun's already setting, um, and I'm just in jeans and a coat, and then I have like um, like calf boots on, so they come up to like my calf. Yeah. And the place that I could park to the place that I could get to the ducks is probably about a mile. Okay. And like, dude, I'm just eighteen and dumb and don't know what else to do with my yeah. time. So I'm right. like, I'm just gonna hike the mile through. This sounded fun. Literally like knee deep to hip deep snow. Like it was deep. I didn't realize how deep it was gonna be. <laughs> but like for me it's like, well I already started. I'm not yeah. gonna turn around. So I just right. kept going. Right. Yeah. So I'm just busting my freaking tail through this snow. Most of the time it was only knee deep, but it would get up to hip deep in some spots. Well I'll get all the way out there. Ducks jump up, boom, 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 shoot three of them. Oh, boom. Sweet. A couple. Right? Hell yeah. One land on the other side of the river. I'm like, great. Well, I'll just have to like walk around. Yeah. Like I was thinking, I'll oh, if I park it. there, maybe I can run down and grab it. Um, but two landed on like the bank of the river on my side. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, perfect. So I uh kind of like make my way down the little ledge of the river. Yeah. Well, they're just like on a frozen ice shelf on the side of the river. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I, I knew that. And I was like, well, I think if I'd be careful, like hold on to the side and like lean right. myself out. Right. No, dude, I slipped, broke through the little ice shelf, go into the river, up to my waist. Oh, no. And I'm not touching the bottom, but I just grabbed the side. Luckily, I had left my gun up at the top, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But I just grabbed like a branch and pulled myself out of the river. But at that point, my boots are full of water. Mm-hmm. My pants are soaking wet in ice water all the way up yeah. to like the bottom of my shirt. And you got to like go almost to my belly through button. snow to get back to your car. The ducks is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, did you grab any of the ones that you... No, saw? dude, because the ice broke and they just went downriver, oh, floating on the ice, no. dude. So There's now no I'm silver soaking lining to wet this one. a mile from my truck right. and it's below freezing. Like it's probably like 20, it's in, or in the teens. Like it's cold. Mm-hmm. Like you know how January gets? Yeah. Like sometimes 100%. inversion comes in and it's freezing. Yep. Um, so I have to make the entire trek back to my truck, dude. By the time I got to my truck, my pants were frozen stiff. Right. Like we're talking like I took them off and the only place that they wouldn't like just stay stiff was like at my knees and at my crotch from just walking. Oh, dude. So like I didn't, I was so cold that I literally just stripped naked right there. Wait, before you. I got to my truck. Okay. stripped Stripped naked. Got in my truck, butt ass naked, cranked the heater and drove home. <laughs> I hey, walked, what else do you do? Yeah. Dude, I didn't know what else to do. I was like, I can't sit in these freezing clothes. Luckily, I had like a tiny little like blanket in my truck. Like we're talking small. Right. Just wrapped that around me and drove home. I walked into my house. My mom's sitting there like, I don't know, she's in the kitchen. Yeah. And she just sees me walk in with just this little blanket wrapped around me. Yeah. And she's like, what in the hell? happened to you <laughs> right because dude i was like still like just shaking i was cold dude right yeah that was that was <laughs> one of the most scary experiences and so ever since then dude i just don't go anywhere by myself i don't have cell reception well yeah because that's dude you never know well i've even told you when you go out hunting alone i'm like do you even carry a gun with you usually like yeah you'll see, but that's your answer is usually it's not always well, the thing is like if i'm hunting i usually am gonna have a weapon and usually it's my bow okay but let's say you have a cougar stalking you, which happens all the time here in Utah. I've actually thought about that a lot because of the video that's trending right now. Have you seen it? Yeah, where he's pop, pop, pop. He shoots at it a couple yeah. times. Which, but he tries to miss it, 
Which I, I don't know if he tried he to miss. Try to miss it or my brother actually has a good point on that. Okay. Um, um, I have a little group chat with my brothers, and one of them was like, "This this cougar is stalking this guy, and in, he's got his he's got his yeah he's got his camera phone right yes, here. He's got his and he's phone. got his gun out. And he's got like his this. gun. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> it's just shaking everywhere. Yeah, it's shaking a ton. But the the cougar's not stopping. Right, he's no. like just walking Coming towards forward. him, and then right when he gets close enough, he goes oh, it starts jumping. He starts he the fires pounce. off around. And it goes right over the top of him, hits the ground behind the yep. behind the cougar, and he kind of jumps away. And then he turns around and starts coming back at him again, and the guy fires again and misses again. Yeah, right over the s- top of his right back. over his back. Yeah. So one of my brothers is like, people got to stop filming for the freaking views and like actually just protect themselves with two hands on your gun. Yeah, and my other like, brothers like, but then we wouldn't be able to see it. So it's like, hey, <laughs> true, hey. fair enough. And also but, the other but thing, if, if if let's say he misses and that cougar doesn't give a shit. And he just eats him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a, I think you'd still have an opportunity to pop his ass. Yeah, you're right. Unless he drops the phone. Because, dude, a mountain lion coming at you, that thing's not light. And no. they have a lot of power. So he could hit you and knock a gun out of your hand. Yeah. Especially if you're only holding it with one hand. But there's like, that's a double-edged sword, though. Because it's like, all right, either you don't film, you drop the phone, and you just shoot the lion. Mm-hmm. You have no footage of what happened. And DWR get, comes at you and they're like, why did you kill this line? Oh, yeah. That's rough. Now you got a problem. Maybe that's why he was holding it. Maybe. Or maybe you wanted the views. Who knows? Yeah. The other side is like, video it and try to shoot the thing and possibly get attacked. Like, there's no win situation in that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, it's a win situation if you don't film and you kill the lion, you're alive. Or it's a win situation. This guy's example, he lived and nothing and he's bad still happened. Fine. Yeah. Now, the poor sucker that that lion tracks that it, next. Yeah. If he doesn't hear it. If he doesn't have a gun. Yeah, that, the lion's going to keep coming. Well, more than likely. It yeah. had an experience with a human. It didn't get hurt. Yeah. It was scary. Sure. But it didn't get hurt. But at the same time, it's like, you know, like the human looks tasty. <laughs> <laughs> like. It wasn't. A, it was like a pretty decent size. Like it wasn't huge, yeah. but it definitely wasn't like super oh, yeah. young. Probably a mom. Yeah. It could have even had just cubs nearby, and that might have been the reason why. It could have been it. But yeah, most of the time I will carry a handgun. But like, also, it's like if I'm hunting with a yeah, bow, then I should be concealed. able to protect myself. Yeah, with but a you bow. have a concealed, so why wouldn't you just carry your concealed? Because sometimes, dude, like carrying all that weight and having all that stuff, like you got to think when you're out there by yourself hunting with a bow, it's you and it's like the deer or the elk yeah right and if i shoot that deer like i'm trying to haul the entire thing off the mountain by myself or call somebody to come help me but it's like any extra weight that i don't have to carry is better how how heavy are those deers four or five hundred pounds no like by the time you bone it all out you're carrying like 100 150 oh because you, yeah you're stripping it right there i'm taking the all the bones out leaving most of the hide and just taking out all of the meat and like whatever else i want to bring out it's fun yeah, usually like the heart Deer heart's pretty good. I've I've taken a bite of deer heart raw. Yeah, I, right out of its. No, did torso. you sear that sucker with some like um, sautéed onions and peppers? Really good, dude. Do you still have a bunch of meat from yours? I still have a decent amount. Do you? Yeah, come on over. I want to come over and have some. Yeah, hundred percent. It's funny when I was scrolling through that video with the mountain lion. The very next one was these gigantic tar- tigers jumping up against this bus. That had like a grate, so people that were sitting in it could feed the tigers through this grate. Dude, dude, tigers are gigantic. Huge. I didn't realize how big they. Huge. Were. Tigers are the biggest cat. Yeah. Well, the like, there's different sizes of tigers, right? Your Bengals are yeah. smaller than your Siberians, and you got your different yeah. like ranges. But but what, how are tigers lions are the, the king of the jungle? Lions aren't as big as tigers are. They're not. The biggest is a liger, but. That's There's not very many of those. No, no I think wasn't there only pretty one much human made. left? Yeah, there was only ridiculous. one left, and it was old as hell. There's probably one in Texas somewhere, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, but yeah, dude, that's wild. Tigers. When we were talking about this podcast, uh, we were trying to come up with because because we've done seven test podcasts before this. We didn't Is it eight seven. Yeah. We didn't eighth. Well, you and I have done like four or five. Okay, that's right. And you've had a few others. I've had right. some others to get some content. Um, but uh, yeah, so we've done seven, but we've actually done eight because 
one of the best ones we filmed, we didn't get on film. Like it didn't save the file to my phone, which dude, what a bummer. I'll, that's why I had this SD card. So no yeah. matter what, we're solid. We got it. Yeah. But yeah, that one was one of the better ones. It really was. That could have been our episode one. Yeah, it could have been. But anyways, when we were talking about doing this podcast for the first one that we're going to throw live, we were coming up with like sections and how we should structure it. And we kind of have some ideas <clears throat> because we've done all these tests. Um, one of the ones we're definitely going to stick to is this today in history segment, because I think it's super cool that we can jump back in history and kind of give a little lesson or just tell you something that you never knew before. Dissect it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other ones are like, what ifs? So it gives you an opportunity to be a little more creative, a little more funny, like kind of free with your ideas, whatever. Um, and I think we can probably do better on that one. Kind of structure it a little better. We can always do there. better. Yeah. Um, but we talked about the most popular types of podcasts right now. And those are comedy and true crime. True crime is actually number one. And I think Kim Kardashian just started a podcast that's true crime. Kim K and the true crime I podcast. Know. I know. I, whatever. She passed Joe Rogan in popularity. Dude, that family. Like, talk about a and mafia impulsive. family, bro. Yeah. Oh, I know. Like. Wild. That's something else there. It is. It's crazy. I wonder what her true crime is going to be. Blackmail of my sex tape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Something like, outlandish. Uh, whatever, dude. Yeah. To each their own, but... But why Why is it that... Because I don't like true crime at all. Like, I avoid those TV shows. I avoid those movies. I, I'm not into them. The, the Jeffrey Dahmer series that's out right now, I don't watch any of that. See, Bell and I just talked about it. I was like, if you want to watch it, I'll watch it with you, but I don't necessarily care to watch it. Yeah. Like, at the same time, I'm curious because everyone's talking about it. But you know, I just can't figure out why people love true crime so much. On I've gone through my true crime phase. Like I will admit it. You've you've watched it before. I've done podcasts, listening okay. to it. Like honestly, like if you're on a drive, yeah, and you want to stay awake uh -huh. in the middle of the night, like listen to a true, true listen crime. Listen to a podcast. true crime podcast. Yeah, not Keep you into awake. it. Not into it at all. I'd rather listen to a podcast, but a it's regular like, podcast. Why do people love like hearing or watching or learning about other people getting murdered? It's yeah, and it's the most popular category. Like it's kind of twisted. It is twisted, super twisted. Like it's something dark there. So we're not gonna do it. <laughs> no, true we're not crime. going down that route. No, well, unless we're talking about some history and there's crime, like you know, eleven lynchings. Like that's true crime, but a little bit different. Yeah, true crime, but fun. What's yeah, up, babe? A little different. That's the timer right there. <laughs> that is the timer right there. <laughs> you guys look so cute. Thanks. We are, we are pretty cute. It looks high, high, huh? Do you like this? Brooke's setup? done a good job. Yeah, I like it. Very nice. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, let's wrap this one up. Let's do it. Oh, sorry. That's not why I was... I've been listening to you guys. Oh, no. You're good. We, we're actually... Why do people like done. true crime? Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, you love it. Mainly girls like true crime. Why? Is that part of it? Is that part of the draw for you? Like, girls like to know, like, why people do the things that they do. Okay. okay. So, like, we like to, like, hear about it and, like, we, like, like to know weird details because we, like, want to know why. Right. Well, the kids, so, so We want to know, like, the motive and, like, how they did it and, like, the reasons behind it. You're going to you're gonna love this. I, and maybe you know about it, but Kim Kardashian started a true crime podcast. Yeah, I know, because she's, like, trying to become a lawyer. Oh, nuh uh. Yeah, she's trying that. to become a lawyer. Actually, I had heard you that. can't hear her. I heard that before. Yeah, she's so she's been trying to become a lawyer for a long time. I don't know if she's passed. But she's she got to like pass the bar. Some, she like did some weird way where like she didn't go to law school, but she's like trying to become a lawyer and she's been like accepting cases and helping people get like pardoned out of jail. Oh, wow. So she can pass the bar, she can become a lawyer. Okay, so this is why this I is why she, she kind of went I down don't know that if route. She's passed it. But I, I can't remember what is her podcast called. That's interesting. Something I know it passed Joe Rogan's in popularity. Well, okay, it passed well, a bunch of these. Think about Kim Kardashian. She, she oh, I know. Some yeah. Women and then Everyone. Crime. Yeah. So people want to listen to her because she's Kim Kardashian, but then they also it's want to smart. Hear she's about like it's, I said, it's dude, the top of the category. That family. Yeah. She's really smart. pretty to look at, and she has a lot to say. 
Yeah, that's like the modern mob family, isn't it? Yeah, well, the Kardashians. We won't talk about the real modern mob families, but yeah. we, that's a safe one to talk about. <laughs> that's a safe one. Uh, yeah. Let's wrap Dude, this up. Let's be done that's, with that's, it. I, well, okay, one more thing. That's a good point that she makes, though. Because, like, men, we already think about all the bad things that people are doing. Like, that, those thoughts just run through our heads naturally. Yeah, every naturally. time we walk into a room, it's like, you're... <laughs> Where's the exit? I need to have my back towards the, bad the guy. wall. Like, dude, Tyson this morning is at McDonald's in downtown. Mm-hmm. Some lady is just screaming in the middle of the parking lot. Yeah. And then there's another dude that's going and checking all the doors. Well, this guy comes up along the side of Tyson's car while Tyson's in the drive-thru. So yeah. he's pinned in, right? Yeah. This guy's walking up like all shady right along the side of Tyson's car. No. uh So Tyson's like rolls down the window and like yells at him. Like, if you want to talk to me, you got to get over there and like. Yeah. But it's like guys are already thinking that. Yeah, they're through. already kind of on it. But So for a girl, it's like they watch it because they like to figure out the why and get yeah. into it more yeah. almost like emotionally. It's the emotional side yeah. of it. Girls like to be prepared. Girls like to know what's going to happen. Yeah. So like girls like to know like what to look for. So yeah, if a girl was kidnapped yeah. or something, so yeah, it's like, now I know what to watch But after. we already know because it already runs through our heads yeah. because yeah. we're the ones that are doing it most of the time. Like every guy kind of has that already in him naturally. Yeah, right. It's but just a girl is like figuring so it out. say like Ted Bundy posed as like a regular, very attractive, normal man and he targeted shy, pretty women. Right. Brunettes. So, yeah, brunettes. And, brunettes. and girls like to know that, right? Like girls... Yeah. Girls want to know what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And they like like to understand those things because it makes us feel more prepared. It's not that we like like to know about people getting murdered. Yeah, right. that's true. We just like, point. We like, like to know. So like when something happens to a girl, we like have to share it because we want everybody else to know so that they know what to do. Like, oh, there was, there was a zip tie on my door. Yeah. In this parking lot at this time. But it's actually good to share that information, though. It is. So we like to, like, tell people so they can, like, hear about it and, like, know what to do. So, like, everybody was so invested in the Gabby Petito case. Mm. Just be- And they wanted to know, like, well, why did he did it? What Like, why didn't she say something to the police officers when they pulled her over? What Like, we like to, like, know, like, the inner workings of it. Not just, like, oh, sense. this person yeah. killed this many people on this date. That's fair. Yeah. That's, fair. that's good. I guess that, that makes sense why it's a top category, especially because I think I, I would be curious to see if women or men listen to more podcasts. Women. I bet it's women. Women probably do, right? I bet it's women. But what's funny is like my audience is 95% men, but it, it's the content I'm posting. We're just not that attractive for women that's either. True too. Kind of ugly, huh, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good, dude. Yeah, that was it was. A good episode. Thanks for watching the podcast. This is our very first one. Stoked to do it more and more, babe. Maybe you could come in every once in a while. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. We'll have true crime episodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, let's let's actually do it. Hey, follow, subscribe, click like, like the uh, like the podcast. Criticize it really, away. Yeah, 